Hi, I'm Lee Iridium. The Iridiots are here. I've got Dom. How are you doing, Dom? Doing good. Good seeing you all. Good man. And Jam, how are you doing, man? Good, thank you. Good to see you all. Happy New Year and every, all that. Yep. Yeah, and we're back for All Killer. It's we been are. ages. It's been ages, like at least three weeks. It has. Yeah. Probably yeah. Longer, yeah. It has. It's, it's been mad. It seemed actually longer than that. But it's because I love you both so much. I think that's what it is. <laughs> no. I missed you. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've missed all killer anyway, because I love this show. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're up to 2008, guys. So um, a great year for me, by the way. Yeah, pretty good. Know that. Um, so in case anyone's tuning in for the first time on all killer, because I've at least got one more subscriber since three weeks ago. Um, <laughs> the rules of all killer are, well, we're up to 2008. We've gone from 1980. But all that way. Um, now it's 2008. So the, there's only a couple of rules. They're jams rules. And the, the first rule is that we can't repeat an album. So this is a list of 12 songs we've got to choose. We can't choose uh, two songs off an album. So it's 12 different albums, if you like. You can choose the same band, but if they have two albums out that year, but that ain't often. Um, and also the track listing has to match the original track listing. So if you've got an album and you love track three, it has to be track free on this list, if that makes yep. any fucking sense whatsoever. Probably doesn't. <coughs> but uh, 2008 means jam starts. Yeah, it certainly does. I haven't lost certainly my touch, does. have I? I haven't lost my touch exactly. whatsoever. Right? Yeah. He's, he's an even guy, man. He's I'm even, 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 even kill. This is mm -hmm. true. So track one, jam. What you got okay. on the 2008 list, mate? Well, yeah, 2008 is a good year. We've got, um, I've got lots of some big bands names here that are making a comeback onto the list. And I've got, uh, I think we discussed slightly before, and before it was on air, and I've got three three songs from three debut albums. So uh, we've got a bit of a selection there. But number one, okay, I'm going with new band. I guess it's a new band, debut album, but uh, Old Hands and their brothers. And it is Cavalier Conspiracy. The two uh, acts, um, Igor and Max, from, uh, formerly from Sepultura. Um, and not in Sepultura for quite a long time at this point. Um, very much in that vein, though. Very heavy. The album's called Inflicted, and the first track is called Inflicted, with a K. And um, <laughs> it's very, Sepul <laughs> very Sepultura-esque, very heavy, very thrashy, obviously. Um, but it's definitely got a modern twist to it. In the background of the first track, it's, it's really brutal. It's got an evil-like sort of sound effects start, and then it goes into a cracking riff, and it's a really fast opening track, as you'd expect. Vocals are still clean, but, you know, thrashy vocals, but clean. There's no shout in there. But you can hear the sort of the synthesizer keyboards in the background, just accents and all the, a lot of the tracks. So it's definitely got more of a modern feel than Sepultura, because some of them early albums, um, Beneath the Remains and Troops of Doom, or whatever it was, um, are, are quite raw, and quite, but they were, yeah, early 80s. But uh, anyway, this was um, Inflicted, first track off the debut album of the same name by Cavalier Conspiracy. Here's what we bring Jam here for. We bring him here for the fucking heavy shit, don't we? That's what he's yeah. here for. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm here for all the fucking pussy shit. That's what I'm here for, all the ballads. <laughs> You've got lots of epic ballads, don't you? Yes, of course I do, mate. Of course. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> great. On top of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great one to start with, mate. What you got in Don for your number one? All right, I've got a new band here. Um, these guys are called Stone Rider. Um, now, this is the only record I have of theirs. I think they've had sporadic releases. I actually looked and bit, did a bit of research. Um, this is just one of those kind of one and done albums that I uh, picked up along the way. Um, kind of Southern, um, kind of classic rock. Not too dissimilar to that Silver Tide band that we were talking about mm. a few years ago. Uh, just good old, you know, meat and potatoes, melodic rock with a bit of a Southern feel, good riffs. Mm. Um, they're from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the song I picked is called Rush Hour, and the name of the album is Three Legs of Trouble. Um, and they had their second album about four years after this but I've never got it. It's been on my Amazon wish list forever, but the price has never gone down a little bit bad. I just never, just never got it. And then when I was doing a bit of research uh, about the band for this, I saw that they self-released another CD in 2016. So um, I don't know if they're sporadic or they got other bands and they just do this every now and then or whatever, but this is a really good record. Um, 
in 2008, you know, kind of, it was really nice to hear just your, just a really mm. great classic rock album, you know, um, and this was it. So yeah, I listened to this quite a bit over the last what, 14 years. So there you go. Stone Rider. Oh, cool. Well, three albums in 14 years is about average, mate. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's about average now <laughs> for a band. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Very cool. I've never heard of them. And that sounds like it could be a little bit of me. So yeah, yeah, definitely check out. Yeah, mm. especially this first track, Rush Hour. There's a, I think there's a music video for it and everything. So very cool. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Okay, well, I've not got a new band. I've mentioned these before. This is more like a project, if you like. Um, of course, Magnus Coulson is back from Primal Fear. Yeah. Um, and he's teamed up with Tony Harnell again. All uh, right. For the mm-hmm. Starbreaker, so Starbreaker, the second album, um, which is called Love's Dying Wish. This is actually my favourite album. They've done three now. Um, and this is the f- my favourite one. And it, weirdly enough, the fans of this band, I believe this is the least favourite because it's, it's sort of experimenting, so they think, with a little bit more modern music. Mm. Uh, saying it's a bit alternative, it's not. It is. It's not. There's the guitars, maybe a little bit tuned down, you know, a little bit like that. But I think it's a fucking great album. It's my favorite one. It starts with a brilliant track called "End of Alone." Um, and it's just amazing. Tony Harnell, of course, just uh, amazing vocals. And it's a real different sort of sounding track as well. It's got loads of atmosphere, quite heavy in places, and does have that modern touch. So perhaps that's why people don't like it so much because they don't like the modern little modern touch I, f- I love it if it's got a little bit of it not too much i like a mixture so uh yeah a little bit a little bit something different especially with the melodic yeah. rock gen- genre yes. you know yeah. i mean I'm, I'm not a huge fan of kind of alternative grungy kind of you know whatever mm. you want to call it but if there's little f- flavors here and there you know i always talk about bruce dickinson skunk works and mm. stuff you know it was like a it was like a new sound i mean we've heard them you know, especially with these vocalists like Tony Harnell, he's done, what, 15 records or something about this point with yeah. TNT and other bands and stuff. Yeah. It's nice to hear a bit more, you know, yeah. something going on in the background, you know. I agree. Totally agree. Because we've heard, we've heard, even though we love all that classic stuff, we've heard it yes. a million times. So, like you said, a little tinge of saint is great. So, End of Alone is fantastic. And of course, if you haven't heard anything else that Tony Harnell's done, because you just haven't listened to him since TNT's done, it's a brilliant album. Uh, End of Alone is a great opening track. That's my number one, guys. So moving on to number cool. two, Jam. Okay, couldn't couldn't be more different from Cavalier Conspiracy, and this is one that Dom will like, I think. Um, British band, Choir Boys, with their fifth album, um, Home Wreckers and Heartbreakers, and this is a song called Mona Lisa Smiled. Um, I think it's one of the singles. There's definitely a video for it anyway. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's a ballad, but it's certainly led by an acoustic guitar rather than an electric guitar, but it's upbeat. It's it's quite, uh, quite. it's all, it, I probably shouldn't say it, but it's, it reminds me a bit of Rod Stewart, to be honest. It's that sort of vibe to it, sort of an upbeat Rod Stewart song to it. Sing um, along. Sing along, yeah. T- classic, quite, you know, can't tell. Anyone. It's definitely Spike. I mean, it does sound a little bit like Rod Stewart, actually, in his in his heyday. And, um, uh, and it's classic, um Quite a song. I think they play it live most of the time when you see them. And um, yeah, just a just a great song. Cool, excellent, mate. Fucking old band. Yep. That always is, reliable it? choir voice. Yeah, yep. they, they always reminded me of Rod Stewart. Actually, the vocalist when I used to hear him. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, that. especially you know Rod when he was doing Faces. You know, like yeah. in the early seventies, yeah. they've got that real kind of. Um, they're they're together, but a bit sloppy at the same time. You know, that real yeah. kind of. Cool vibe, I like it. Definitely. Great one, Jam. What you got in, Don? Okay, I've got the return of Extreme, which was Mm. a bit of a bit of a surprise at the time. Um I think they kind of did a reunion tour, but I really didn't think they would do a whole full length, but they did. Um it's called, I don't I'm probably not gonna pronounce it right. Sadades de Rock, S-A-U-D-A-D-E-S. So I believe it's Spanish, but I don't know. Uh, what it refers to. I probably could have looked it up, but anyway, I didn't. Um, the name of the song is Comfortably Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this album is kind of picking up where their last one, Waiting for the Punchline, um, ended a bit more stripped down. 
you know, probably because they were doing it themselves and didn't have any major labels. So it doesn't have a huge, you know, that kind of queenish production. But I do like them stripped down. It really sounds like they're all kind of in the same room and really vibing. And um, it's, it's a good record, you know. I mean, I don't know if I like it as much as pornography or anything like that, but um, it's good to hear them back together. You know, I love Nuno's playing and I think Sharon's always had a great voice. Um, and this was their um, fifth album. And 13 years has passed since mm-hmm. their last one. So are they still together, John? Do you know, are they still together now? Spor- sporadically, you know, mm-hmm. I saw them uh, maybe 2015, 2016. They did the whole, they did a por- pornography um, anniversary tour. Um, that was great. So I think you know, every couple of years they get together. I, I don't know. Again, I don't know if they'll do another full length, but um, they're not like a full time band. I was saying, the only, the only reason I said it is that I think that the way the music business is now, I think that if they would, they got back together for an album, I think it'd be quite a big thing now because of yeah. the way the music scene is right at the moment. I think if Magic Extreme were going to bring out a new single, I think they would do, I think there'd be a lot of people interested. That's I think that, really the thing is, Tom said, I think they've, they've done something fairly recently, maybe not last two years, but maybe in the last three or four years. I think they have, they've did, certainly done stuff after this, haven't they? I'm pretty sure they have. Mm. I know they had a live record and DVD and stuff, but I'm not really? sure. I think this is the last cool. one they've done, but it could be wrong. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Um, okay, so I'm going to Avantasia. Mm-hmm. So this is the big, I don't know what you call it, opera, metal opera. It's symphonic yeah. rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's this is uh, Tobias Samet um, from Egg Guy. And this, I mean, he's had a few albums now. This is the third one called The Scarecrow. Probably one of the best ones, in my opinion. This one and the one following this, which I think was the year after. Um, two brilliant albums. He sort of has big gaps and then he brings a couple out close and then he has a big gaps again. It's a bit strange the way he, he does it. Uh, but this is the actual title track, The Scarecrow. And this is an epic, I think, nine minute song. Um, obviously with Tobias singing with Michael Kiske in bits of this as well. And of course, of course, who else is in this one? Oh, um, come uh, on. Oh. John Lundy. Johnny. Johnny Lundy. Yes, Yorny. Yorny <laughs> Lundy is in this. <laughs> this is actually probably known as, or some people, Yorny fans think this is his best vocal performance ever. It is this fun. track or the album? This track. No, right. wow. He does appear a couple of tracks on this album. Um, there is a couple more, I think. But this one here is a fucking proper, a brilliant, brilliant epic song. There's an excellent version of it live as well. All films proper, properly with Avantasia on stage. Mm. And it's fucking excellent. And this is, is a brilliant song. It's got loads of twists and turns. It sounds a little bit folky sometimes as well. It's got heavy parts and... It's, it's real epic. It's absolutely excellent. The Scarecrow, nine minutes of epicness. There you go. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Yawny sounds fucking great on this, but they all do. They're, they're brilliant singers that go on his album. So, yeah. yeah. The Scarecrow, the title track, was my track number two. Cool. There you go. Okay, track three, Jam. Okay, I'm going to uh, another British band, actually, British metalcore band. Supposedly, I'll come on to that. But this is um, the second album from Bullet for My Valentine, Scream, Aim, Fire. Uh, this song is called Hearts Burst Into Fire. But I say metalcore. This this song really isn't metalcore at all. They, they've definitely changed a bit from that first. It was quite screamy, the first album. This one hasn't, doesn't really sound like I mean, this song, I don't know if you've heard it, is, is almost, it's just a metal track. It's got twin lead, almost sounds like Thin Lizzy lead and or Maiden or Jesus Priest or something like that from the riff they're playing. There's no, there's no, shouting in this whatsoever it's great singing it's just like a straight head metal track very fast very gallopy i mean you'd uh, lead lead like this you know it, you, you might not let the rest of the album but you like this um and certainly dom as well um so yeah if you have not heard it um hearts burst into fire rest of the album yeah perhaps there's got some some metal core tinges to it but certainly this song is um i don't i think it's the lead single off it and you can probably see why but uh, yeah. there you go hearts burst into fire very cool. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. What you got then, Dom, for your number three? I've got the rebirth of Tigers of Pantang. Yes. Now, 
I, I say the rebirth because this is, you know, they've, they've released records sporadically, you know, um, it's, it, it's the one guy, the, the one guitarist um, who is still around. Um, and he, you know, it's kind of, it was a rotating lineup for quite a few years, but this is where they really solidified with the singer that they're with now. This is the first album with him. His name is Jacopo Mele. Um, but he, Why but he's still... <laughs> Well, I did my best. You better than me. Uh, <laughs> you better than me. Fucking hell. <laughs> he's still he's still in the band now. Um, I love this guy's voice. Yeah, Man, he's, he's really voice, yeah. yeah, he's really got a great voice. Um, so as I said, this is kind of the rebirth because this is the first one with him. It is their ninth album overall. Name of the album is Animal Instinct, and the track I pick is Live for the Day. Um, you know, Tigers, they don't even though they were part of new wave British heavy metal, they didn't really mm -hmm. have that kind of rough and ready sound that, you know, that's it, <sighs> new album was kind of just a catch all for all these bands, but I mean, they have more in common with Def Leppard than they did with Motorhead. You know what I mean? Um, and, and uh, even more so now they're just a really great melodic hard rock band, maybe a bit heavier than some other melodic hard rock bands, but uh, still, you know, still, you know, good choruses. And as I said, this singer has really brought them to the fore and they've really made some great records since this one. And then the next few after that. So uh, yeah, Tigers of Pantang, welcome back. Really happy to have them here and making really good music. Yeah. No, I love them now, man. I mean, I've really put them on Prime Mantis, They've got the same sort of story in it with the, yeah, the, right, the, the early eighties and now how yep. they sound very similar. Very, both, agree. both very good bands, very similar sounding, but yeah, melodic heavy rock. Maybe you call it. I don't yeah, that. and then and both great singers. I love the Prairie Manor singer as well. So yeah, yeah both really good vocalists. They've actually got a new EP out, Tigers of Pantang. It's been advertised, but I don't think I think they're doing what a lot of bands are doing now. They're selling them physical. You just can't get like stream on this EP. So they need the money, man. You can't, you can't <laughs> buy. Yeah, you these can't guys blame are broke them. from the last two yeah. years. You know. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, and it, it's it's a difficult one though, isn't it? Because in one way, people don't get to hear them because they won't buy it. So you know, streaming in some ways can get people to go and see them live, can't it? Because they, yeah, yeah. so you know, what I mean, there's there's a fucking juggling act, isn't it? Do you get out there and be noticed, or do you try and make the money out of them fucking CDs? Yeah, I think they pretty much they they've kind of solidified the reputation for these last with these last few CDs. Yeah, that I think they probably can. Mm. They probably would make more money selling them direct. Probably, you know, yeah. as a CD. So, and in their case, I think you know the the people that like them, and obviously everyone knows their name. So, um, yeah, they probably they'll probably uh, give them a bit of a shot of money so they can tour and make a full length and stuff. I think a lot what a lot of people do now is selling a physical copy for a while. And yeah. then releasing it streaming, so yeah. they try and make some money like that. And then, anyway, no, great band, good choice. Um, okay, so my number three, I'm going to Christian metal band called Theocracy. They're American band. These Sorry, are can you can, can you say that again, please? What? Well, <laughs> theocracy. Theocracy. Oh, theocracy. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, did, I, I, I didn't hear it the first time no that's all right. <laughs> so, American band now these are sort of almost taking Striper out of the equation I suppose they're probably the the more they're, they're obviously newer band this is the I think it's the second album from these guys and they're quite well known in that Christian metal you know in, in that group of people that listen to this stuff they he does Matt Smith is the singer, and on this album, he actually got the band a, a band. On the first album, he did everything, so he's a real talented mm -hmm. guy, he's a brilliant singer, guitarist, drummer, fucking everything. Um, but on this one, it, yeah, there's an improvement because it sounds like a band as well. But this Matt Smith is one talented um guy, absolutely super. I think the cat shagging tank behind me again, yes. <laughs> The cat is banging. Um, oh, my missus's little throwover thing she got for Christmas again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just let him enjoy himself. He's quiet. Anyway, um, 
not the right uh, time to do it during my Christian metal uh, little song here, but the song Listen, is called... God, God <laughs> created shagging cats as well, so, you know. <laughs> that is true. This is a nine, another nine-plus-minute track, by the way. Holy cow. Actually, <laughs> this, is the first, this is the first time I um, heard this band because someone asked for it as a reaction. I knew it was nine minutes, and I thought, oh, my God, how can I be interesting for nine minutes? Well, lucky enough, I didn't have to think as the music was. I was he's coming for a cuddle now. Look. <laughs> oh, you're all right. You finished now. Um, anyway, uh, Laying the Demon to Rest. Good title for a song, isn't it? And this goes, yeah. being a nine-minute epic sort of track, this has got loads of different twists and turns. It's got thrashy bits. It's got progressive bits. It's got really melodic bits. But it's all pretty fantastic, actually. It blew my mind when I first heard this song. And the, the musicianship is just second to none. Absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's off the album called Mirror of Souls, the, the second album from Theocracy, Laying the Demon to Rest. There you go. Cool. <laughs> all right, Van Pete. He's going to get warmed up. He's by the heat in there. Anyway, track four, guys. What have you got there, Jack? Four. Right. Um, right. First, one of the big hitters. <laughs> and this is, uh, to say, long awaited album is uh, an understatement. This is Guns N' Roses. Oh, my God. With <laughs> Chinese Democracy is obviously the album. But um, I think you've got to give this a bit. I know it's, I know it's only Axel. Let's, let's, let's pretend it's only Axel from Guns N' Roses. But some of the songs actually are pretty good on it. And um, this song, Street of Dreams, is my favourite song on the album. I absolutely love it. Some of the other ones on there are pretty good as well. I won't mention any of them. I'm sure none of you got it, but just in case you have. But no, Street <laughs> Dreams is a brilliant song. Um, they don't actually play this because obviously the, the new Guns N' Roses, they do play a couple of songs off here. They play the title track, which I think is track one or two, something like that. So I can mention that. But yeah, they don't, they don't play this. And I'm not sure they ever ever have, but I don't know why, because it's a, it's a great song. It's got like a slow intro, piano intro, and I think it's some of the actual's best singing. He probably took him about 27 million takes over the like, past 15 years over they recorded it, and he perhaps did it 20 years ago. But, you know, it's great vocals. Um, I have to play it loud. I love this song. Um, it's not really a ballad, but it's, it's got a slow start. Bit of, it's a piano-driven, but, um, yeah, it's got guitars and drums in it, and it's a great song. If you haven't heard it, if you've never listened to anything with this album, have a listen to this. I must admit, Street I've always dreams. been... I, I have always been intrigued about that album. Not intrigued enough to actually listen to it, but well, yeah. you know, you've, you've heard never so listened much, to it. No, you've heard. I've heard so much about it, whether it's bad or good. Good, good. Even I've heard it more than once. I might have heard <laughs> it. I might have heard it back then, but I've, I might have heard snippets of it. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I, I am intrigued. It, it makes you intrigued whether how bad people say it is. It, it, that's not, sometimes wow. that makes you more intrigued than it when people say it's bad. I, I, I think people saying it's bad is wrong. They can't. Well, it's got your opinion, of course. Can't say it's bad. There's nothing bad about it. There's nothing. It's well produced. It's got some catchy songs. It's not all catchy songs. It, it's not an album that should have taken 15 years to make. Let's put it that way. And it's not a classic Guns N' Roses album by any means. But it's, to say it's bad, I think is, is uh, my opinion, not 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 correct. Is it as bad as absurd? Oh, there's nothing that sounds like that in there, for instance. And nothing sounds like that at all. Sounds like, you know, use your illusion era, Guns N' Roses. I don't think there's anything that sounds like absurd on it. Or or old or hard school either. Nothing sounds like that either. Oh, not oh, cool. from my memory. He's a heavy hitter, though, Guns N' Roses. Thank you very much for that, mate. Thank you very much. Right. What, what you got then, Dom? Okay, well, here's one of my favourite bands over the years. I've really held back from including them every time they release a record because... They have a lot of them. I have mentioned them before, but I had to mention this because this is kind of the last one. Um, this is Enough's Enough. Um, their album called Dissonance, which was the last one with the original band with Donny Vi on vocals. They've they've since continued with the bass players taking over vocals, and these records are okay, but um, as far as I'm concerned, it, it was really Donny's band. He was the main songwriter, and... Uh, so this is the end, um, and they went on a really high note. What a fantastic record. Um, I could have picked pretty much any song on this album. Just amazing. He's such a great pop rock, hard rock songwriter. I mean, just 
He just blows me away. Um, this is their 12th album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, he's just been writing corkers throughout all the years. Obviously, whenever people hear Enough's Enough, they just think of the first album and all, you know, the glam and everything. And uh, But, man, he's really, a, he's a fantastic songwriter. Very Beatles-inspired. I know Lee, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't like that. But uh, it does have those kind of 60s harmonies and things. But, you know, beefed up, you know, with a bit of a louder guitar and stuff. And Cheap Trick is another touch point for Enough's Enough, uh, absolutely. Um, so it's got that really kind of melodic, 60s inspired, but kind of fed through an 80s hard rock uh, vibe. But anyway, I can't say enough about Enough's Enough. The song's called uh, Altered States, and this is their last album called Dissonance. So um, I would hi highly recommend someone check out their back catalog because, man, there's some, there's some absolute gems in there. I'll get onto them 14 albums straight away. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <you will. laughs> I can't even watch a series if it's too long, let alone forget. <laughs> Listen, I'll blame you, man. Yeah. But no, if we're going to start, start with Dissonance, man. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. Okay. <laughs> Good one, mate. Right. My number four is Yawny. It's the actual yeah, band, oh, Yawn. So, Second appearance. Yeah, Yawn. So Shadow People is the track. Um, you just said about, like, you could choose any track. This was this is basically the same. He's, he's so solid, this guy. Um, Shadow People off of Lonely Are the Brave. It's the fifth studio album. And obviously, he's doing loads of stuff in it. Other than the Yawn albums you know is i just mentioned one of them the scarecrow off of avantasia but yeah he's his actual solo band if you like just a brilliant do inspired with cover dow inspired music really just classic rock but sort of beefed up i just love him man well you might know that anyway he's probably mentioned <laughs> about 75 times all the way through these years but, I, um, I expect him to, to make three more appearances on this year's list alone. <laughs> going to have a look now, won't it? Well, maybe not, but no. <laughs> I might even be able to get an all-killer from one year with Yawny in it. <laughs> you probably could, yeah. <laughs> so Yawn, Shadow People from Lonely Are the Brave. It's a great album, by the way. So there you go. Cool. Right. Track five, what you got then, Jack? Okay, um, another, another fairly big hitter, and this is... Um... This is the title track from their last album to date. And I think they might have done a couple of songs after this, but not, not, not a full album. And w they also split up and have reformed. And will we get another album? Possibly. And that's Motley Crue, of course, with oh, yeah. the title track from Saints of Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I, I really like the album at the time. I mean, I think it's got a bit of a slating afterwards. But I mean, it's, you know, it's the, full, the full members, the whole team there. It sounds pretty rocking. It's got... a um, it's certainly classic Motley Crue sounding. Maybe the songs aren't quite as good as Shout Out the Devil type or Girls, 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 which I, uh, one of my favourite albums is. But um, I would say the songs haven't really stuck with me that often. I don't really listen to them. I, I do listen to this song probably the most, if, um, and it's probably the most catchy um, from it. So, yeah, just classic Motley Crue, cool riff, um, and a great song. I mean, will they ever do anything again? I don't know. Are they going to... Are they going to play live? That's what I, I mean. I keep seeing videos of Vince and then, <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? And then he had the accident, didn't he? Would he fall off the stage or something as well? Mm -hmm. or... I don't know. The thing is, he's had, he's had, know. yeah, they had the tour announced, didn't they? Then obviously, COVID come along. He's got two, he's had two years to get fit, isn't he? Fit and ready for this bloody for this tour. It's like he comes out, he can sing, he sings one song half decent, and the fans go mad and say, Oh, god, he's improved, he's improved. Then the next week. They yeah. fucking play you another video and he can't breathe and he can't sing and he can't remember the words. He just, fuck knows. I don't yeah. know. The amount of money they're probably going to charge anyway. It's just fucking ridiculous. Now, does anybody need to remember the words anymore? They've got auto keys on the stage, haven't they? A lot of bands. Anyway. I think he just likes the... <laughs> Whatever he's fucking singing. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> but but he, he's done that since back in the day. Yeah. I mean... I first saw them on the Girls, Girls, Girls tour, and he was he would only sing every other line, really. It was just like... Yeah, yeah I think I saw a fucking uh, live... There's quite a live um, a version of Live Wire, I think, and it's from when they first were appearing at an outdoor festival. It's on YouTube. Like It's one of the most famous ones, and he, was, he didn't sound all that then, so 
don't know what the fucking no. surprise. No, he's is. always yeah, he's always been fairly lame life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, though, mate. A bit of Motley Crew. Right, what you got, Motley Crew? Yep. I have a match with Jam. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah. Now, unlike Jam, I think most of this album is absolute fucking garbage. But <laughs> I did pick this song because it is far and away the best song on the album. Um, we we did a didn't we do a show where it's one no well, did we do a good song off of a bad album or did we do a, yeah yeah um, this no, was definitely it was the other way around wasn't it? it was the other way around wasn't it a bad uh, song of a two. good album or something yeah. yeah no we did that one didn't we but we didn't do the other I don't remember yeah. anyway <laughs> that. This would be a contender for that album with one good song. <laughs> um, I think the problem with this album, if you look at the liner notes, it's like, because Nikki Six was always the main songwriter. I think Mick contributed some riffs and stuff to some other songs. But if you look at this album, every song is either four or five songwriters. And it's Nikki with like all of these outside writers. And it just, it sounds like, it's one of those things where they kind of sound like they were trying to recapture like the past, but it wasn't coming yeah. easily. You needed like some new blood to come in and say, Oh yeah, you guys used to sound like this. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, I think I was reading something the other day where they said, wasn't it DJ Asper said that he played half the guitar on this album. I don't know. Yeah, just come out yeah. it just happened to be this week. I read that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that probably is, is the case, but I did want to put this song on, on here because it is, yeah. um, it is a great tune and it is kind of a good song to go out if they're not going to record anymore. This is kind of a great end of an era song, you know, just talking about their, their lives in Los Angeles and yeah. playing from the beginning and stuff. So yeah, Molly crew. Uh, cool. How many albums did they do? Let's see. I wrote that down. It's their ninth That's album, ninth and last album. Cheers, cool. mate. Thank you very much. The crew. Um, cheers guys. Both of you. A good match. Right. Cool. I'm going to, uh, this is a debut album I'm going to now, um, from Sweden, obviously, mm -hmm. um, the <laughs> band called Heat. So these oh. probably, they probably will be mentioned quite a bit um, as the years go on for me. But yeah, this is a great album. This is, they sort of turned into a more sort of melodic hard rock band now. Um, this was more AOR sort of sounding to me, it sounded a bit like, say foreigner europe mm. maybe a lot of mixture of those sort of things um but yeah a great album this is keep on dreaming which is obviously track five just a great a great aor album they for two albums they carried on with this same singer then he went and then i think the band improved even more after that and this singer now who's on this album is now back in the band yeah yeah I think I think that's right. Eric Gromwell. Oh, no, that's that, right. Yeah. He, he came in and now he's gone and he's doing other stuff. But um, I don't know. I this is a great singer. This guy, whether he can, Eric Gromwell is something special altogether. So, but now he's back in the band. I'm hoping they carry on with the same sort of music they were doing the last few albums with Eric Gromwell in. But this album, as it stands, like when it you know as an AOR album. Um, is absolutely fantastic and yeah they, they, they've had a great career so far so heat keep on dreaming from sweden there you go oh cool. guys all right Sweden. Cool. yeah yep. right well, number six aren't we right six um right going to uh american band i think that's their third album i think uh, i think i had something off their first album and then i think lee and myself didn't agree agreed on the second album wasn't so good but this is a marked improvement in songwriting i think this is shine down from the uh, sound of madness album um uh, probably my favorite album probably the best album maybe but they've done i do like the newer stuff they've got a lot quite a modern sound now the, the, the last few albums um this is this is quite a straightforward rocky one um song is if you only knew which is uh, one of the big ones for them i think it's one of the ones to put them on the map actually for a lot of people um video for it um probably this lead single uh, some other great songs there which are earlier on the on the list in devour is really good the title song's really good second chance is a brilliant song i really like second mm. chance which is they these are all earlier in track listing so i can mention them um i, I was i would have put that on there but i mean i think uh, if you only knew is, is a great song i say it's a softer song but it's not i wouldn't call it a ballad it's a softer mm. song and it's got really catchy chorus and yeah you never heard shout shine down uh, listen to this and 
you can get into them. I don't, I don't know what I describe Shine Down as. A, a, just a rock, heavy rock band. They're uh, definitely sort of a modern heavy rock band. I think they're yeah, the modern rock band. They're definitely in that. Yeah, probably all Autobri- or bridge sort of. I mean, they played with them yeah. so many times. You would put them on the same bill as all bridge. I'm not saying that. Yeah, they're, they're probably not as but... guitar driven, are they? They're not really as heavy. They don't really have the riffs and, the, and the, they don't mm. have a Tremonti or anything like that. But they're, they're just they write catchy songs and they're, and they're yeah. great live. The front man's brilliant. A little short fella. Oh, mm. sorry, vertically challenged fella. Um, <laughs> you. Uh... <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, Dom. Oh, <laughs> he did say midget then, didn't he? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, I think he he actually said dwarf. I think. Oh right. Okay. So that's what I heard anyway. I heard, I heard Hobbit. Dwarf. I thought he said Hobbit. Actually, Hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> troll. Uh, the troll, maybe. Yeah, he's a good front man, though. I must admit, it's people pretty, thought, yeah. do find him a bit annoying. Um, yeah, he preaches he's very, a bit. He's very sort of, you know, look at the ne- person next door to you, tell them how much you love them in the audience type of person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He does a bit of that. Wow, he does a little does bit of that. that. Yeah. And you're just hoping when he says, turn to your right, you're hoping it's someone you know and not... <laughs> <laughs> some, not fucking, some long-haired fucking dwarf yeah, standing yeah. there going, give us a kiss, mate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, good one, mate. Excellent. Anyway, shine right. that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was small. This just shows you, doesn't yes. it? Because I've yeah. seen him live, I think, twice now. Yeah, and he didn't. I don't know. Perhaps so his personality makes up for it. Then. There you go. At least no, got well, high I've heels never... on. <laughs> he got high heels on, maybe under his <laughs> jeans or whatever. I'll tell you the story. I don't mind mentioning it before, so I'll just uh, keep it quick. We went to see him, and there was in, in Nottingham, and um, he came out. And he came right in, and he separated the crowd. He, he walked right up the middle of the, the the thing, and he stopped right next. I was stood here. My brother was there, and he was literally the gangway was next to us. And he stopped right by my brother, just just behind him. And he was doing his talking, and. Um, I think I think um, he, got, he got lost track of where he turned around and then he walked into my brother and he's, he was taken aback like that. It's quite funny. We got it on video recording. <laughs> <laughs> but he was dead. That's how I knew how small he was because I well, my brother's six foot. I'm only five nine or something. He's he's shorter than me. He walked into his he walked into your brother's belly button. Like yeah. His face. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the video out. Yeah. I'm really tall. I am. I'm so tall. I really, I can't say nothing. Oh yeah, you're. you're... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers for that. Good one, mate. Love shine down. Good band. What mm. you got in, Dom? I've got uh, Alice Cooper. Oh, oh yeah, Alice Cooper. Along came the spider. Along came the spider. You're right. Yeah, really good album. Um, concept album about a serial killer. Uh, the name of the song is Wrapped in Silk. Uh, this is a really, really strong latter day. Album. Guess how many? Uh, guess what number album this is for Alice Cooper? Twenty six. Yeah, 18. twenty twenty. Oh, I'll spoil well, your thunder there. It, no, I should. That was it, bad. Well, no, it's it, it, it's his eighteenth album, but that's solo albums, so it's not counting the yeah. Alice Cooper band that's schools cool. out and all those things. So probably is somewhere. <laughs> like anyway, um, yeah, Long Came a Spider. This was his highest charting album since Hey Stupid" nineteen ninety one. So. Um, it, it had some momentum behind it, um, but yeah, really strong album. What can I say? We all know Alice, we love him, wrapped in silk, it has that kind of sinister but melodic vibe to it. Um, yeah, good stuff from Alice. So is, it, is this when he's gone back to doing garage rock from, from the industrial stuff he was doing? Yes, yeah, there's no, yeah, the, the those two albums, Dragon Town and Brutal Planet. Yeah, he's he's left those far behind, thank goodness, and he's uh. Return to what he does best. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, so mine number six is Shine Down. Yeah. If you only knew. Cool. What a great track. Yeah. Oh shit, uh, have I mentioned that? What? I thought I was uh, uh. What? oh sorry, right, yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. What the fuck? So I thought I'd stolen your thunder and mentioned your track. Of course, uh, I was thinking it was a, a it's a match, word. Jam. It's a match. It's a match. It's a match. <laughs> The only time I ever get worried about matches is if I've chosen the wrong fucking track number or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you said Shine Down, I was thinking, oh, please let it be if you only knew. Because I don't know what the fuck I, I would have had to lie and say it's the same one or something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, no, nah, brilliant song. I would say it's a ballad. I'd put actually ballad down. It's very close to a ballad. Yeah. yeah. It's a very cool song indeed. So um, yeah, one of my favorite Shine Down songs. So 
You've said enough about it, mate. Very good, yeah. very good song indeed. I'm not going to mention cool. any size things because I'm not like that either. No, no, so, no. Um, not sizest. Not sizest at all. Okay, track seven. What you got then? Um, okay, another big hitter, but I'll be quick on this because I've mentioned this song lots of times, but I'm going to put it in anyway. Um, Metallica from Death Magnetic, which I a lot of a lot of Metallica fans don't like. I don't know why. For me, I mean, it's probably because I love, love Unjustice for All. It's the closest they've done to Unjustice for All, I think, since obviously all the loads and reloads. So I really enjoyed this album when it came out. Um, saw them live in Nottingham and they played the round, which was really cool. So every, you know, you know what it's like playing the round. It wasn't a great sound. It's difficult in the round, but you know every rows of you know you're at the front all round, and to play in Nottingham as well, which is quite you know there's only Nottingham Arena isn't that big. It's probably only five thousand, six thousand, something like that. It's pretty pretty cool, and that was on this tour. But the song is Unforgiven Three, which as I said, I've mentioned lots of times, it doesn't sound like Unforgiven One or Two. It's a standalone song, but it is a slower song. I love the vocals from uh, James Hetfield on this one, and uh, it's an epic seven. Well, it's a seven minute song, but uh, it's a bit of a slower one. But I just absolutely love this song, Unforgiven Three. From Death Magnetic, I think people give them a stick now on these last couple of albums. It's because they're they're sort of saying they're trying to go back to what they were. But why wouldn't they? Because that's the best fucking period. If they're trying to do something like that, sometimes you just can't. You can't capture the magic, can you? Of master of puppets, can't instance. win, can they? Can't win. You go back to doing loads, and they don't get slated. Do some anger, they get slated, and they go back to original sound, they get slated. So you know. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it, it is difficult. Perhaps it's, you know, it's just one of those things. Just try your artist, do a good album. Yeah, why not? Might anyway. get a new one next year, I think. Bring out, <laughs> let them bring out another St. Anger. Let that fucking please everyone, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe right. they can find some, find some unused Lou Reed tracks and make Lou Lou 2. Lou Lou 2. Lou Lou 2. Lou Lou 2. Lou Lou squared. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, good one, mate. Metallica, what you got then? You've got some heavy hitters today, uh, Jan. That's for sure. Ah, yeah, got a few more. Yeah, as well. What you got then, Dom? So I have a band you've never heard of. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> no, that's good. This is um, modern progressive rock, modern prog rock. This is an Australian band called Unitopia. Um, don't remember how I stumbled upon these guys, um, but I fucking love them. Um, the singer just. You know how sometimes a singer just just hits you, just you know, mm. just their inflections and their and their tone and stuff. Well, this guy does it. Um, the name of the song is "Inside the World," and the name of the album is "The Garden." Um, they have very long songs as well as a couple tracks on this album that I think are nearly fifteen minutes long. Oh, <laughs> true, yeah. true prog rock, you know. Mm. And they run the gamut from really heavy riffs, and then they'll, they'll have like a saxophone, and then <laughs> they'll have like um, little tweet tweety birds. <laughs> it's, 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 it's mental, but it's but it's it, it's just great. Really good song. Um, now. This is their second album. They broke up in 2012, 10 years ago. So I was a bit sad about that, but I was doing a bit of research doing this and I just read that they're back together and they got a new album coming out this year. So wow. I'm really happy. Um, I'm really glad I put this on here so I could look that up and see that they're actually returning. So that is good news for me. I never got to see them live or anything. You know, sometimes if Australian bands aren't selling a lot of records, they don't do big tours in the other parts of the world, understandably. Um, but maybe I'll have a chance to see them this time around. So yeah, Unitopia, if you've never heard them and you like Yes and earlier Genesis and things along those nature, um, these guys are really keeping the flame alive. It's just a shame you're not going to get to hear the album because you're not listening to any more new music, so you can't listen to it. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, to a point. <laughs> 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 I will definitely check this one out. Well, I, 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 I had enough for our end of year show, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is true. This if is it's true. a band I love and I know that I have to hear their new album, yeah, absolutely. We might expect that at the end of the year 2022, then maybe. Maybe See if they keep it up, yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, well, this is a band that I've mentioned a few times on here. I think we all like a bit of them. I'm sure Jam likes them as well. I know you do, Dom. It's Tesla. Mm -hmm. So the song Breaking Free from Forevermore. Now, yeah, I saw your badge there, actually. I was going to mention that. So um, <laughs> this is the eighth album. So they haven't had many out, really. Have they? They've had big gaps, haven't they, um, yeah. in their history. 
but I, I think me and you, Dom, said this album is a fucking good album, and I think I think this is the best one out of the. I don't know from into the now onwards. I would say this is my favorite. Okay. This is. I don't know if you said it or not. I think you said it's no. a strong. Act. No. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you fuck it. I'm sure you. I'm sure you've mentioned this before. Listen, I, I, I think it's an improvement over into the now, but that's as far as I'll go. Oh, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So I think that's might be what you said, but I think it's their strongest album since you know the the classic. Buster Nut. You know, yeah, Buster Nut. I love Buster Nut, but the first three were even better than that. But then first four are just classic. But this is the next one for me. Um, Breaking Free is like a medium pace song. It's it's just brilliant. It reminds me of old Tesla. I love all this album actually, um, but this is also one of my favorite. I mean, there's there's a, this is another one. I left this album till last because I just knew I could choose anything off of it. Wow. Um, yeah, Breaking Free. I went to see him on this tour. It's the first time I've seen Tesla as well. Um, at Islington. I mentioned them on our favorite. Uh, that's where we must have spoken about it. I mentioned it on my yeah. favorite gigs. Little London Islington, mm. thousand people or something, or 500, 600 people, whatever it is. And it was fucking brilliant. They were absolutely fantastic. So, for uh, breaking free from forevermore, Tesla, the mighty Tesla. There you go. Fair enough. Okay. Track eight, guys. Okay. Um, I'm going for a band from Denmark, um, a band that I've been listening to for a long time, but obviously Lee's only just heard a few songs recently, and that's uh, Volbeat from their. Oh, second album, third album, can't remember. It's from Guitars, mm-hmm. Gangsters and Cadillac Blood, and it's a song called Still Counting. Um, absolutely brilliant song, one of their best songs. It's got so catchy opening to it. As usual, a lot of these songs, they got an opening, and then it goes into a massive Metallica-esque type riff, Metallica of the old days. Um, and this is just so catchy. They do it live all the time. It's got some great lyrics, counting all the arseholes in the room. I'm definitely not alone. You know, it's just great <laughs> stuff. Um some great tracks on this album, in fact. It's one of them. I'm sure it's, it's a second or third. Anyway, uh, title track's brilliant. Um, Hallelujah Goat's a really good song. And there's one I'm going to try and pronounce. Maybelline I Heffen Holder is a very good song as well. These are all earlier tracks, obviously, as well, that I can mention. Um, but no, Volbeat, if you've not heard them, then there's nothing else quite like them. Put it that way. You might not like all the tracks. I think Lee said in his review of the new album, some of the tracks are more rockabilly, more perhaps different. And some of them are sort of got a southern style to them and some of them are just playing out metal and rockers they weren't perhaps some experimental on well, they've always been they've always had stuff on it but yeah yeah, yeah it's fucking You've weird got to, hear Bobby to know what they're like really it's like that album i don't know if i had because i got it on spotify and it's like got about 20 fucking tracks on but there's like but i think it finishes like normally at like track 11 or 12 or something like that but if there's there's at least twelve tracks on there that are fucking excellent. Out of those fucking twenty, there's like, and if it had a, them twelve tracks on it, I'd be like, wow, that is brilliant. But like, it's even the second track in is like proper rockabilly, you know? It's like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it's just too <laughs> di- it's too diverse for me. You get like, like you said, a like a Metallica esque song, then there's a rockabilly song. It's like that's just a bit too much for me. As some bloke said under comment when I did the review, he, he went on about Volbeat, about how the good they are. And right at the end, it went, oh, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just Brilliant. because, and, and I actually didn't review the Rockabilly ones. Exactly, because I, yeah. I didn't think it would be fair because I don't like that sort of music. So I purposely said I weren't going to review them. I'd review the ones that were more rock. Or heavy rock, yep. or metal. Work. You can't do any better than that, can you? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, though. Anyway, you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who does though? Jesus. I know, I... <laughs> anyway, yeah, great one, mate. I like that. So, did you do an album review and only review certain tracks? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a hurt? <laughs> I don't know. It's because I. Know? It's because I know Volby, and everyone knows Volby as that band that are so diverse yeah. that they sort of parts of their albums are like not even metal or rock or they're just some sort of Elvis rock songs, whatever the fuck they are. And the other half are metal. So I sort of made that point at the beginning that they're not my, <coughs> my style. 
But put it this way, if, if there was an album full of that rockabilly, I wouldn't be reviewing it at all. I'd be like, fuck that off. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I've started as well shortening my reviews by only talking about the tracks I like. Okay. Uh, yeah, my fa- or just say my favourites are, rather than go on yeah. about every fucking track. Yeah. So there you go. Because no one wants to hear you ramble for 20 minutes. <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> fucking exactly. <laughs> Some guy doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, good one though, mate. Thanks, Jam. Right, what you got then? (laughs) All right, well, um, not really a match with you, Lee, but I've got Ed Guy. Ah, Ed Guy at number two. Uh, This is their eighth album, and it's uh, Tinnitus Sanctus, or I guess over here you say Tinnitus, don't you? Yes. The ear thing. Is that how you pronounce it? Tinnitus? Tinnitus, right. um, tinnitus, 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 tinnitus. We would say tinnitus like in the states, but I think here you say tinnitus. Maybe. Don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I anyway, the Illuminum. name of the song is nine two nine. Aluminum. Sorry. Aluminum. Oh. Yeah. Aluminum. Aluminium. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Aluminium. <laughs> anyway, the song's called nine two nine. Ed Guy is a band. Um, Oh, sort of like Halloween, where they get too powery with that double bass thing that we always talk about when the, you know, it's just like fucking blah, 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 blah. even that, even if it's super melodic, it's like, you know, fucking hell, stop it. So <laughs> and I have, and I have their moments with that as well. They, you know, they, they, they're probably known as a power metal band, but mm. I'd say half their albums normally have a more medium paced kind of your classic rock, melodic rock kind of metal, you know. Um, this is one of those songs. Um, they've been really consistent for years. I saw them support Hammerfall um, probably a couple of years before this, and they were really good. They were really, really um, uh, got the crowd going. They, they were great. I haven't seen them since. But, um, yeah, so uh, time to put some Ed Guy on my list. So today's uh, 2008's as good as any. So there you go. I mean, Avantage are a bit like that. I know they've got a lot of them double kick drum fucking fast songs as well. And then they, you know. <laughs> yeah. Too fucking happy. Stop being happy. For fuck's sake, it's metal. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So big band for me now. Jam, one of Jam's favorite bands. Journey. <laughs> um, this is the, the big return. When they got that little dwarf singing for them, Arnel Police. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I love this album. Revelation is the return of Journey. Brilliant story in it about how they got the singer in a bar on YouTube singing fucking Journey songs in some bar or something in a remote town. And then they, uh, the guitarist saw him, Neil Sean saw him on video and got him and now he sings for Journey. It's just, it's just one of them dream come true, I suppose, isn't it? But yeah. absolutely love this album. This is a real, I think they, it's something really cool about this album, even though you could say it's like, you can almost pluck songs from this album and it's almost like they've revamped old Journey mm. songs a little bit. Do you know what I mean? But it's kind of like a thing. We've got me- Motley Crue and Metallica and Journey. It's like yeah. the are coming Something. back with these with these albums where it's just like, yeah, let's just do it. Yeah, <laughs> like they really went for the classic Journey sound. It obviously works because I think this sold fucking loads, this return to, for Journey. And mm. then later on, they, they did another album with Arnell and it didn't sell because they went to not Journey-ish. So, you know, I don't know what they're going to do, I think, this year or next year when they bring the next album out. I know, but whether they go back to proper AOR journey, I don't know. But this is, this album was, this song's called What I Needed. It's probably one of three or four ballads on the album. You know, um, very sort of dark sounding ballad as well. Really loads of atmosphere in it. Arnell is just fantastic in this. This is the 14th studio album from Journey. So um, an amazing return. Love it. So one of my favourite Journey albums, actually. Revelation. There you go. And what I needed. There you go. Wow. Okay. Cool. Track nine, Jam. You got any journey on yours? Or 
No, no journey. <laughs> I, what I've got is something similar, and that is pirate metal. And this oh, is oh, Hailstorm. Yeah. Hailstorm, yeah, I've seen them live. I've seen them, at, I've seen them at Download. Brilliant. This is their, their debut album, um, Bit of Pirate Metal. Um, Captain Morgan's Revenge is the album, and this song is called Wenches and Mead, <laughs> which is... Uh, <laughs> Is, uh, Captain Morgan's Revenge. Oh yeah, it's um, yeah. Wenches and Mead is a song. I mean, a lot of their songs, obviously, have uh, got lots of wenches and lots of mead and lots of drinking and lots of uh, sailing and uh, all that sort of stuff in it. But uh, you, you're probably not going to sit there and listen to all the whole Aylstall cat- back catalogue in one go. You, you you have enough after listening to the album. But it's it's all good stuff. They're very good musicians. I changed around a lot, and um, they're brilliant live at the festival or seeing live. This is probably where I got COVID from because I went to see him just before Christmas in London. That's probably mm. where I got it. But um, brilliant COVID. live, exactly. Brilliant. Um, but bit of pirate metal. There's some great tracks on there. Nancy Tavern Witch um, and the title track. Captain Morgan's Revenge. This one's got a, a bit of a sea shanty, as a lot of them are, but it's proper metal, really fast paced, very sing along. You know, if you've not heard Ailstorm, you, you've got to have a listen to them. They're, 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 they're very good. But um, yeah, you wouldn't want to listen to it all day, but uh, for a bit of fun and uh, festival afternoon, they're, uh, they're definitely worth seeing. They've got a massive following now. I mean, this is Brixton yeah. Academy they played, so they're getting pretty big now, which is uh, not bad. Yeah. Yeah, they are yeah. quite big. I mean, I remember that, at that festival, a lot of people were talking about, I could hear people talking about them all day, about that band. That was the main yeah. band being spoken about. Loads of T-shirts, Hailstorm T-shirts. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cheers, mate. Have you, have you ever listened to them sober, Jam? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to them? Um, uh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> he had to think about it, so no. Well, the in, the live setting, in a live setting, no. I mean, obviously, on the on the stereo, I have, but yeah, I, I probably oh, would put them on the more at the end of the night. The yeah, maybe the end of the night, I probably would. So I probably had a few beers then if, if on a weekend. But uh, <laughs> I perhaps would listen to Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> They're not a Sunday morning coming down kind of band. Like <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks for that bit of pirate metal. <laughs> what you got then, Dom? Okay. There's a around the corner uh we've got a solo <laughs> album from tip winger <laughs> oh yeah i love the man so whenever he releases something i gotta big him up um this is his fourth solo album it is called from the earth so from the moon to the sun excuse me name of the track i picked is what we are um his solo career i really like it um it's, it's much different from winger it's more i don't know kind of a rocked up sting maybe like it's it's got that kind of peter gabriel sting kind of bit mellower vibe but of course he kind of puts heavy heavier guitars behind him and stuff he's always been a great songwriter and i mean if there's any justice in the world this you know this would be one of those records that people listen to and hit and hits year end lists and stuff but he's got the stigma unfortunately of the of 17 and things like that behind him but man this is really good stuff um i think it's the last little thing he's done so i wish he he would do some more because it's been what 14 years now um i know he's busy with winger and stuff but it'd be great if he could crack out another solo record or two because it is a different animal (coughs) um it's not heavy but it's uh it's fantastic stuff so maybe even a little bit proggy here and there um Mm. yeah so there you go kip winger fourth solo album Get a lot of love on here, Kip Winger and Winger. I love it. It's good. Bit of a love fest for him, isn't it? I like it. It's good. Listen, I just, I got a soft part in my heart. I don't no, know no, why. I, but... I agree. I agree. Totally underrated and given a bad vibe, you know, a bad time when he shouldn't have been. So there you go. I mean, he was even nominated for a Grammy for his classical recording as well a few years back. Very clever songwriter for sure. Definitely. So yeah, he's got some props behind him. I agree. Okay. Um, cheers, mate. Well, I'm going to Sweden again. One of my favourite bands, um, Eclipse. So we've got Eclipse and Heat on here mm-hmm. at the same time, which is called probably two of my favourite Swedish bands. Um, this is off the Are You Ready to Rock album. It's a song called Million Miles Away. It's the third album. Um, this is where Eclipse started to, they've got like a signature sound, if you like. And believe it, unbelievably now, People, some people were sort of saying it's a bad thing now. Now they've got their signature sound. It's like, oh, it all sounds the same. It's like, oh, shut the <laughs> fuck up. You know what I mean? Just, but they've molded this. Because wasn't sound. that your second favorite album of the year? Wasn't that number yes. two? 
It is fucking brilliant. They have got a certain sound, but it's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? I just don't, I don't, I don't understand. And they've, they've sort of molded this sound over time, starting with this album, really. This is where they really started to sound like Eclipse, the sort of Eclipse we are now, but the, the beginnings of it, not, you know, just starting to sound like them. Just absolutely fantastic uh, song. I could have chose, I wanted to choose other songs off this album, but it's pretty strong all round. So Million Miles Away is a good track, but it's surrounded by fucking fantastic tracks on the album, which I wanted to choose, but just the way it worked out with your stupid fucking rules, Jam, really. But Million Miles Away <laughs> is a great track from Eclipse. There you go. Jam, what you got there, mate? Okay, well, we'll go in another completely different direction now. Um, a band that's going to probably be on my list quite a lot um, and bands that you'll uh, absolutely hate, and that is Hollywood Undead with their debut album, Swan Songs. This is um, rap metal, of course. But, I mean, not, not every song has got heaviness in it. There's a lot of that isn't. <laughs> Put it that way. So, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, just, I don't know what it is about them. There's, I just like like all the stuff. I mean, I, I suppose when I was young, I used to listen to like Beastie Boys and, and you know, even a few years ago, perhaps I had a bit of Eminem or, or some other stuff. I wouldn't say I was into gangster rap or anything, but I always like that you remind song. me of. That's who is Jam that? reminds me of Eminem, isn't it? Don't you think? <laughs> no. That's a little yeah, bit, doesn't it? absolutely. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, it's got that same blonde do. Yeah, <laughs> like Stan, like the Stan video, doesn't he? He looks like him yeah. in that. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Apart from it's great in real life, it just might look blonde, but it is great. But anyway, that's cool. <laughs> oh, well. Let's go with blonde. That's fine. We'll go, we'll go blonde <laughs> for, for all the all the hundreds of thousands of people watching. We'll call it blonde, so that'd be good. Yeah, but, but sorry, I mentioned the song. Song's called California, but I could have picked anything off this. This uh, heavy. I mean, the debut song I picked on one of the other videos, Undead. I think it was a horror one, wasn't it? Undead, the first song, and that is brilliant. That's a heavy song. So your soul, everywhere I go, great songs on here. Um, yeah, I just love them. I don't know what it is, why I like them so much. A lot of songs are heavy, don't get me wrong. I have got you know, guitars and stuff like that, in, but not every song has, so they wouldn't be for everybody. But um, yeah, I've seen them live. They're great live as well. They've changed a few members, but they, they used to have masks when they first started, but they don't bother them much anymore. They come on with them and take them off. But uh, brilliant live. I've seen them quite a few times. I think they've played Download about five times. And I've, I've seen them separately as well. Wow. I had no idea they've been to the UK that many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they love it over here. I think maybe they're bigger over here than you know, some of the bands are, aren't they? The bigger over here. Sounds like it, yeah. I think I've definitely I've seen it at least twice. Yeah, I saw them on the five. Yeah, they've got an album V on it, uh, their fifth album, and they did their last album. I saw them on that tour. So yeah, and then I must have seen them download at least three or four times. So yeah, those times. Wow, yeah, pretty good. Cool. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. All right, what you got in Dom? Okay, I've got an album from probably. I mean. If you put everything into perspective, they've really been one of my favorite bands since I was a kid. Um, this album took a lot of stick, and I'm not saying it's a fucking masterpiece, but this is Judas Priest with Nostradamus. Um, <laughs> infamous. Nostradamus. Yeah, the infamous yeah. Nostradamus. Now, I'm, I'm not, as, as I said, um, it doesn't all work, but I fully support them going out on a limb and doing something different. That's what I've always loved about Judas Priest. They've, they'll do Screaming for Vengeance, and then they'll do Turbo, and then they'll do Point of Entry, and then they'll do Painkiller. Like, they've never been a one-note band. They've always kind of had ebbs and flows, and uh, they want to do this concept for quite a while, and they did it. Um, I, I don't love everything. It's a two-disc set, and I think if, if it's probably about half of it I like. Um, the song I picked here is Future of Mankind, which is a great song, really is a great song. Um, I do realize, you know, I'm not going to be, I do realize there's a bit of a spinal tap to it. I, I know that. But um, as I said, I'd rather them stretch out every once in a while and do something a bit interesting than just make painkiller over and over again. Um, I think that'd be really boring. So there you go. Juice Priest is their 16th album. Nostradamus, the infamous Nostradamus. <laughs> Future of Mankind, which is a kind of a great epic song. Very cool. Cheers, <laughs> mate. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, well, I'm going to Iced Earth. Ah. Here we go. So, of course, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but something wicked this way comes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. I don't know. He just can't get enough of this. He just can't, honestly. So when did it all start? There was an album called Something yeah. With Something Wicked This Way Comes, and then he came okay. back with <laughs> other like songs related to it, I think. Now, this one, because okay. you had Framing Armageddon, which was the one with uh, Tim Ripper Owens, Something Wicked This Way Comes, Framing Armageddon or something. Okay. So then they got rid of Tim Ripper Owens. They were going to do yeah. Something Wicked This Way Comes Part 2 with... <laughs> <laughs> With Tim Ripper Owens, but I think they they booted him out. Got Matt Barlow back, who was the original, not the original oh, I still singer actually, because I think he came in on the third album or something. But the main, he's always been the main I Earth singer. He came back and did the Crucible of Man, something wicked this way comes part two. <laughs> um. <laughs> I know, I know. I just can't so, leave it alone. So just... Where are we at now? Is this part uh, three? No, this is part two. I've just been trying to get uh, around to telling you it's part two. Oh, no, really? no, but it's called part two, but it's the third album that is actually Mentioned. about it. I've lost the will to live, I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This song, <laughs> this is a great song, by the way, called... Um, Cru- <laughs> of course it Cru- is. It's called Crucify, yeah. Crucify the King. It's like a slow, chuggy metal song. Matt Barlow's fantastic. Like I said, Tim's gone now, Tim Ripper Owens. This is the ninth album. And it's weird. Tim, he came back, Matt Barlow, for this album. Fans slate this album. I quite like it. Uh-huh. Um, and then he then he goes again. And then Stu Block comes in until obviously the 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 uh the thing the yeah. the <laughs> Incident, the incident, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he he can't leave it alone. And believe it or not, even though this is the last album that says something wicked this way comes, I think a later album, the whole side of it is dedicated to something this way <laughs> wicked. This way. Fucking hell, he fucking loves it. How, how many yeah. more times can you write about a good versus evil story? Uh, the same. Story you know what about? I. I, I really feel sorry for his cellmate because he probably just talks about fucking something that <laughs> basically comes 24 <laughs> 7. And Trump. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. God, would you shut up about something wicked this way it comes? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Clink. I know. It's lucky enough I'm not a real person that dives into lyrics too much. I just love the music because, you know probably do my fucking brain in but anyway <laughs> i stuff crucify the king from the crucible of man something wicked this way comes part two <laughs> but it's actually part three with part four to come <laughs> <laughs> anyway track 11 what you got then jeff track 11 right um it's something wicked this way comes part four. <laughs> <laughs> <That's not bad. laughs> Um, yeah, no, I don't know. Um, right, track four. Well, I've got, I'm going to finish off with a couple of big hitters, and um, this one is a ballad, but not who you think would be doing a ballad, and it's Slipknot from oh. their album, fourth album, um, All Hope Is Gone, which it took a different bit, bit, bit of a different direction for the first three. Obviously, they were trying a bit of new stuff. The song is Snuff, which is 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 a ballad. It's certainly a ballad for Slipknot. It's certainly a ballad. Although it is a power ballad, it's um, obviously got an acoustic start and um, singing, and then the drums and the guitar do kick in later. And it's just a quite a mellow, just a metal song, really. It's nothing you wouldn't say if you didn't know it was Slipknot, you'd say it was perhaps Stone Sour, even I guess you could say because obviously uh, Corey Taylor's singing. But um, yeah, it's just a just a quite cool song. So it's, it's not the last track on the album, but it's just, it um, it uh, flows nicely into the last track and uh, a bit different for Slipknot, of course, at this point. Yeah, I like that album. Yeah. It's pretty good. This. We slip not albums. I, I don't know. I, back there was a couple here. This one and the one before. I think the my favorite. Volume three. Yeah. Yeah. Where I could. It's like I could choose more songs that are, I like, and then you've got the rah, 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 songs. You know, which I'm like, nah, fuck that shit. You know, I, I, but but they've gone heavier again now, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Which is a shame. 
that last track they released last year was brutal. I, I, yeah, didn't, I, I did yeah, like yeah. the album before. I thought the album before was really good. I saw them on that tour. I thought the album before was really good, but the last song I didn't like it. Uh, it give me fucking, good. give me Stone Sour. Fuck it, just give me Stone Sour now. That's it. Well, that's probably what he was thinking. It's like if you want a mellower Slipknot, just listen to Stone Sour. Maybe you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like there's already Stone Sour, so why are Slipknot getting, you know, more mellow? Slipknot yeah. should be. Yeah, that should chaos. be brutal. Yeah, you're right. There should I be guess. chaos. Uh, like Although I, I, I never expected a song called Snuff to be a ballad. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was not expecting that. This is called Snuff, and it's a really heartfelt ballad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about heartfelt, but <laughs> oh. I don't know what the lyrics are about, but I don't think it's a love song. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Good one, though, mate. But it's not excellent. Right, Don, what you got? Track 11, mate. What do I got? Track 11. Okay, this came out of nowhere. This is a band called Black Tide. They were signed oh, yeah. to... Yeah. Have you heard of Black Tide? Yeah. They were kids, weren't they? Little kids. No, yeah, silver well, they were silver tide. Well, silver... What? Who? Black yeah, they're about... Tide. Yeah. Oh. No, I never heard of them. Black Tide. They were on, they were on um, a major, like Island, Interscope, one of those subsidiaries um yeah this album came out of nowhere they're like a they sound like a cross between like slave to the grind era skid row with a real kind of new wave of british heavy metal kind of sensibility to them nice. um but yeah the uh the name of this i picked the title track light from above is the name of the album and the song i picked but yeah the lead singer and guitar player when they record this record was 14 years old fuck me you never would guess listening to it. Like he's got a mature voice and just, you know, it, it, it's wild. But even if you um, don't, didn't even know that about them, you know, it's not, it, it, it's not their calling card. The calling card is their actual music. You know, it's just kind of mind blowing that they were so young, uh, especially the singer and guitar player, but uh, yeah, great. Um, really good album. Unfortunately, their second album uh they kind of dropped the kind of new wave of british heavy metal and got a bit more modern sounding not i don't know i guess more like kind of bolt for my valentine kind of thing a bit bit more of those kind of um stabs in there well, he couldn't he couldn't um, sing the, the classic rock anymore because his balls dropped <laughs> i guess so i don't know i mean he doesn't really have a really high well he does kind of get a bit high on this but Anyway, uh, it's a great record. Black Tide, Light From Above. If you like your classic metal, melodic metal, man, this, this was a stormer. I listened to this to death when it came out. I never got to see them, unfortunately. I, mm. It really been a while to see them, 15-year-olds, playing this fucking amazing music. But, uh, yeah, uh, Black Tide, I've never heard them. Check them out on think, Spotify or YouTube or whatever. I might be wrong, but I think they'd, they'd play download, I think, when this come out, because I remember... That's why I heard of them because I saw them and I heard they were so young. I thought, well, was, yeah, I don't usually like to see younger bands than yourself, but we went, I'm sure we went to see them. I'd have to double check oh, that they probably played 2008 or 2009, I guess. I'm sure they did. Yeah, no, that, um, that makes sense. Them. But I think they had a bit of a push behind them. So, yeah, they probably probably did play down on. Probably had to go on first because they had to be like home by fucking. I'd be in bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool, though, mate. Very cool. Never too young to rock, are you? To exactly. Rock out. Yeah, Brilliant. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to a southern band called Blackstone Cherry. So you guys have probably all heard of them anyway. But um, yeah. off their Folklore and Superstition album, the second album, I love this album. They mellowed out a little bit, I think, compared to the debut album. There's quite a few ballads on here, which I love every one of them, obviously. <laughs> I think there's like, it's weird. They got to this stage and the next album, it's like two rock songs, a ballad. Two rock songs, a ballad. So you know, like yeah. four or five ballads or whatever on the album. This one's and called... Lee is in heaven. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do love a southern <laughs> rock ballad, Cedric. And um, this one is called You, and it's an absolutely brilliant song. Um, there's some excellent ballads. Well, this is an excellent album altogether, really. Maybe their best album for me. Either this one or the next one are, are absolutely fantastic. So, Blackstone Cherry, You, really heartfelt song love it there you go does it get you right here Lee? it does, does. Mm-hmm. it does not as much as thing, not as much as things your your father said which is on this album as well which is like a it's almost like a simple man 
sort of thing. Mm. That, that is absolutely fantastic as well. But uh, that's gone, that one, earlier on, so I can say that. Anyway, yep. that's my track 11. We're on to the last track of the list, track 12. What you got then, Jan? Okay, I'm going to finish with a, a really big one. Um, ACDC from their Black Ice album um, and a song called Money Made. Um, I like this album when it came out. It's, it's really long. It's something like 15 songs on it, I think. I think it was a double album on vinyl. Um, 15, song, 15 songs with one riff. That's fucking too much. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's fighting cock, Lee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah i mean this this i think it's a, this is the fourth single off it. it it probably wouldn't be my first choice song um something had to go on it but i did enjoy the album when it came out i haven't probably listened to it for a while i went to see them at uh, wembley i think it's the only time i've been to wembley to see a gig i think and it was uh on the black ice tour they had a big rock and roll train at the side of the hmm. stage it was pretty cool uh it's a stadium you're talking about wembley stadium wembley stadium yeah believe it or yeah not. yeah because because when they come back for the rock or bus tour they played at um I think they played at West Ham's ground, which um, I, I went to that as well. But yeah, this they actually played at Wembley for this one. Fairly sure, but don't quote me on it. But um, yeah, this, it's, it's you know ACDC like you know we're going to get this one's actually got more of a, like a, it's got quite a southern riff to it, a bit perhaps easy topish. This mm-hmm. one, um, it's just a rocker. I mean, God, it's not the best ACDC song ever, but uh, fit in quite nicely into my list. So I have stuck it in there. Money made from Black Ice. Very cool. Yeah. Cheers, mate. All right. Okay, Dom, what you got? Always happy to talk about ACDC. Yeah. Okay. Um, for my last one, I have an album that is described, well, a band that is described on Wikipedia as hardcore, metalcore, and sludge. Uh, Make of that what you will. This is a Canadian band called Cancer Bats. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the you punk, know them. I thought they were punk. Yeah. I thought they were more punk. I thought that was punky, yeah. They are, they are well, h- hardcore... Punk, yeah, I guess, would punk, be, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Hardcore is punk, really, just more of a yeah. metalized punk, I guess. Mm-hmm. Anyway, these fucking stupid labels. Um, <laughs> the, this is their second <laughs> album. The name of the album is Hail Destroyer, and the song I picked is called Zed's Dead Baby. Um, ah, I've seen them live a couple <laughs> times. Um, they are very similar to another band I like called Every Time I Die, where they do the singer does scream, but it's not like. Um, it's more like a punk rock scream. It's not like a or anything like that. You know, it's uh, just kind of that melody mixed with a bit of a rawness to his voice. Um, really good riffy stuff. Um, I'm sure they've probably played download as well. I would assume. Yeah. Jam. Um, They're one of yeah. them bands that sound really interesting. And um, I have got some of their stuff. They did it Bat Sabbath as well, don't they? They played a whole load of Black Sabbath songs as well. They did the whole album of it, I think. Oh, but, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did a part of the cover of Sabotage, the um, Beastie Boys song as well, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're one of them bands I need to listen to. I just haven't. So, yeah, well, that, that's quite cool. Yeah, I, I was really surprised. Um, uh, the co-worker put that on. I was like, wow, that's really fucking great. Um, so there you go. Cancer Bats are still going. Yeah, very cool. Cheers, mate. Um, great lists, by the way, guys. Um, Thank you, Lee. You're always so supportive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my track 12, when in doubt, go to Sweden. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a debut album from an AOR band called Work of Art. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think they've had about four or five albums, but they're, they're actually not going anymore. I believe they've disbanded now. Um, oh. but they brought out really... Like, oh, every album's been really strong. This, like I said, the debut album called Work of Art. The song called One Hour, very Toto ish. You know, it's it's quite mellow stuff. It's not metal or anything like that. It's definitely in the AOR genre. But they're a great band. Um, the sort of singer now has gone to another AOR band called Lionville. I, oh, um, yeah. I wish he'd stay with Work of Art. I don't mind Lionville, but Work of Art are just a, an amazing band. They've got that real Toto feel to them. I love them. But, um, yep, yeah, that's it. Rounding off with a bit of mellow, a bit of mellow AOR called One Hour by Ooh. Work of Art. I oh, didn't realise like Work of Art was Swedish. Yeah, Swedish. Another English, Swedish, it? another Swedish band, mate. Um, they do sound a bit quite English, to tell you true. The actual mm. music, you, you would think they don't sound Swedish yeah. at all. Have you guys got any um, honourable mentions? Um, yeah, a few. What you got then, Jack? Okay. Um, one song I wanted to mention, it's um, 
it's the soundtrack to no, soundtrack the, the theme tune to songs of anarchy uh, curtis steigers and the forest rangers called this life really love that song i mean i i was late to the party and he watched sons of anarchy all seven series last year so it's obviously quite fresh in my mind but i, re I really like the title track for that it's quite rocky um blackstone cherry i was going to mention yeah folklore and superstition got some great songs on it blind mm. man things my father said pieces free and i think the track 13 is really good is it something floyd collins or something i think it's really good but it's track 13 so i couldn't have that um def leopard songs from sparkle lounge go on it's not 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 pyromania but there's, there's some, some good stuff on there um opeth uh, first time i haven't had an opeth album on there watershed it's, it's very heavy this one it's probably the last heavy album i do love the song coil which i've mentioned before which is a folky opening song air apparent got good burdens are the only perhaps softer one on there slightly softer for for opeth <laughs> Um, and then Warrior Soul, it, it's only Corey Clark, but they released the album, but they they would get jumping on the bandwagon. They decided to call it Chinese Democracy and release it before Guns N' Roses oh. did. <laughs> just a bit of a laugh. Um, I remember that, yeah. And uh, th there's some good stuff on there. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's, it's, it's only Corey Clark, but the first song, Fuck the Pigs, is a classic. It's a great song. Um, they re-released the album afterwards with a different name. Can't remember what they've called it. But um, yeah, I've actually got the original one where it actually says, Chinese Democracy on it, which is quite funny. And finally, Nine Inch Nails released two albums. One, Ghosts, I think it was called, was sort of mostly instrumental. But the second album, The Slip, was more like a sort of a normal song, Nine Inch Nails, if you like. Um, and there's a couple of good songs on there, One Million and Discipline, a couple of good ones uh, on that. And that's it. Very cool. Cheers, mate. Go any, Dom? Nah, I mean, then, you know, there's quite a few records of bands I've already spoken about on other shows. So, yeah. I'll just move yeah. on. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've got White Snake bought out Good To Be Bad. It was quite yeah. good. Um, Firewind bought an album out called The Premonition as well. Quite like Firewind. They're all right. Um, what else have I got? Dokken bought out Lightning Strikes Again, which was quite a return to form. Oh, yeah. Um, I sort of, I probably would have gone there next if I didn't fill my 12 tracks up. That probably would have been next probably. But that's about it. That's, that's all I've got really. Um, cool. and I stuff want brought out something wicked this way comes part <laughs> 27. <laughs> you just know he's doing a lot of writing in prison as well, so when he comes out, it's just going to be a I don't even, like a I don't even vomit think of I'm not sure if he's in prison. I, I'm getting confused. I thought he was under police protection at the moment. Oh, is he? That means, gra that means grassing yeah. people up, I think. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Ratting on all of you. Yeah. yeah. As long as he brings it's new crazy. music out, I don't care, really. But um, it can't be political. It's got to be something wicked this way comes. Something it? wicked it? this way that's comes, yeah. That's all it could be. <laughs> 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 Look, guys, we had really good fun, as usual. 2009 is next. Probably next week at some Reunited point. Reunited and it feels <laughs> so good. <laughs> so if I'm still here next week, because obviously I've got COVID at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll do 2009. Your turn. Yeah, yeah, we'll do 2009. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Obviously, put your list below. Uh, we're back. Oh, so yeah. All yeah. them people. Yeah. Is it Luca? Who else puts their lists in? There's a few in there. Um, put their Mark list. does, obviously, and uh, John Elvis and all that. So, yeah. yeah. Get them in, guys. Oh, I, know, I know you've been preparing for it, waiting for, for our return. So, there you go. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.